due to the coronavirus. Um, we've been forced to um, uh, put our yoga classes online. I'm not quite sure how this is going to go. Um, unfortunately, going onto YouTube, I can't have any music playing in the background because it's subject to music rights. Um, but we'll give it a go, see how it um, pans out, and hopefully you'll be able to follow this at home um, via your laptops or via your um, TVs, etc., your smart TVs. Um, so all of these links at the moment are going up onto private YouTube links, which is what I will have sent you um, via an email. So hopefully you can hear me okay, hopefully you can see me okay. Um, so let's get going. Okay, so as with our um, traditional classes, um, if you want some heat, then hopefully whack up your heating um, in your home, um, put some fan heaters in, um, and then you'll get that hot experience. But first of all, you're gonna bring yourselves to the front of your mats, and then we're going to lift the toes up and spread them out. So there's a nice gap in between each of them. And from here, we're gonna lift up through those inner ankles and draw up through the knees. Gonna roll the fleshy parts of the thighs inwards slightly and then draw that tailbone down. That will help you to engage those bounders. We're gonna lift up through the chest and then lengthen up through the crown of the head. And then roll those shoulders back and down and feel yourself lengthening through those fingertips. And then gonna close our eyes as we take our focused breaths. So when you're ready, you're gonna take a deep breath in through the nose and draw that first breath into the stomach. So the stomach's opening and expanding. Then as you breathe out to the nose, you're gonna draw up through Mula Bandha, that pelvic floor area, and you're gonna draw back through Udiyana Bandha, that belly button area. Then with your next deep inward breath, and then draw the breath into the ribcage. So you can feel yourself stretching sideways, front and back. Then as you breathe out of the nose, you're going to engage that Ujjayi breath. So you're breathing through the glottis of the throat, or making that Darth Vader type noise, but with the mouth closed. And again, when you're ready in your own time, take a long and deep inward breath, so really stretching and opening around the ribcage. And as you breathe out this time, you can feel the feet grounding down into the mat. As you can feel the crown of the head lengthening towards the ceiling. And again, take a long and deep inward breath, so really stretching and opening the ribcage. And as you breathe out this time, you can feel those shoulder blades relaxing down the back. You can feel yourself let go of any tension around the forehead, around the eyes and the jaw. And again, in your own time, breathing in fully and deeply, really stretching and opening. And as you breathe out this time, you can feel yourself let go of any tension around the upper back, mid back, lower back and pelvis. And one more time, take a full and long inward breath, so really stretching and opening through the rib cage. And as you breathe out this time, you can feel those feet grounding down further into the mat, and you can feel the crown of the head lengthening further towards the ceiling as you let go of any tension, stress, or anxiety held anywhere within the body. You're going to keep those bandits engaged throughout the class and keep that Ujjayi breath strong. And then when you're ready in your own time, we're going to take a deep breath in as we sweep up, looking up or forwards and then breathe out, fold forwards towards the mat. Remember to soften through these knees, especially for the first couple if you can feel it pulling in that lower back. And you're really lengthening through that chest and just feeling, seeing how the body's feeling this morning. Then when you're ready, you're gonna roll the spine section by section all the way up into that standing position. And then take the shoulders back and down. And again, when you're ready, take a deep breath in, sweep up, and then breathe out, fold forwards. Again, again, relaxing here for a moment. So you're tucking that chin in towards the chest. You're lengthening through the crown of the head. And you're relaxing through the shoulders and trying to release and let go of any tension around that lower back and hamstring area. 
And again, when you're ready, you're going to roll the spine on that outward breath, section by section, all the way up into that standing position and take the shoulders back and down. And again, take a deep breath in up and then breathe out, fold forwards. Again, again, relaxing through the neck, so you're engaging that chin lock. You're lengthening the crown of the head towards the mat. And again, feeling the body weight evenly placed through the whole flat of both feet. Again, when you're ready, strong outward breath, squeezing through the banders. So you come all the way up into that standing position and shoulders back and down. And again, take a deep breath in up and then breathe out, fold forwards. This time you're going to take a deep breath in, so you're either supporting the hands on the thighs, the shins, the feet, or the mat. Then lengthen that chest towards the front of the room and feel yourself draw those shoulder blades away from the ears. And then relax back down again over those legs. Then strong inward breath again, rolling that spine up into that standing position and shoulders back and down. And again, take a deep breath in up and then breathe out, fold forwards. This time again, deep breath in, lengthen through the chest and relax back down again over those legs. This time with that right leg, you're going to stride it back behind you, lower down onto that knee, and you're going to sink forwards into that low lunge. So you're trying to relax through the lower back and drop this hip forwards, and either keep those fingertips onto the mat or onto that thigh, and lift through that chest. Okay, so you're still using that Ujjayi breath, and you're still engaging through those banders. Then open up through those fingers as you press those palms down. And flick up through those back toes and stride back into your downward dog. So you're softening those knees one at a time, helping to warm up further through those hamstrings, the quads, and that lower back area. Good. Then from here, when you're ready, we're going to look at that space in between the hands. Either lower to the knees first, or stride that right leg through, then lower down onto that left, and then sink forwards into that low lunge. So again, dropping this back hip forwards, and either keeping those fingertips down and lifting that chest, or hands onto that thigh, and again, lift through that chest. Again, so still keeping that Ujjayi breath strong, and keeping those shoulders relaxed. And again, open up through those fingers, you're going to press those palms down, and then stride back again into that downward dog. Good, so you're tucking that chin in towards the chest, and you're continuing to soften those knees one at a time. Good. Then look at that space in between the hands. From here, we're going to lower down onto those knees, we're going to relax those toes, and we're coming into our thread the needle stretch, so we're keeping these banders engaged, and you're taking that left hand through the right, taking that ear towards the floor, and that shoulder towards the floor. Good. And from here, come back to that center position. Then as you breathe out, in a swap size, taking that right arm through the left, again, ear towards the floor, and shoulder towards the floor. Good, then breathe in, come back to that centre position. And as you breathe out, you're going to flick up through those toes and then back into that downward dog. Good. So either this time keep this downward dog static and you're really stretching through the back of the knees and the heels of the feet, or you're softening those knees again. Good. Then from here, we're going to lower back down to those knees. And we're coming back into that thread the needle stretch. So taking that right arm through the left, taking that shoulder towards the floor and the ear towards the floor. And this time, just see if you can reach that right arm slightly further through. Good, then come back to that center position. Then we're going back over to that other side. So taking that left arm, through the right, ear towards the floor, and shoulder towards the floor. Good, then breathe in, back to that centre position. And then from here, we're going to flick up through those toes and breathe out again into that downward dog. 
Yeah, just gently tucking that chin in towards the chest. And really trying to lift that body weight out of the arms and through into those legs. Good, then look at that space in between the hands, either lower to the knees first or stride. You're gonna breathe yourself forwards, lengthen through that chest and relax back down again over those legs. Good, then this time really grounding through the feet, engaging the thighs and the bandas. You're gonna sweep up into that centre position, looking up or forwards, and then breathe out, hands down. Good, then from here we're gonna come into Surya Namaskara A, Sun Salutation A. So when you're ready, you're gonna take a deep breath in, sweep up, looking up or forwards, and breathe out, fold forwards. Take a deep breath in, lengthen. From here, we're gonna stride or jump, take it back into press up or table position, which is on the knees. Then tuck the elbows in as you lower all the way down to the mat. Lengthen through the crown of the head into cobra or upward dog. And then breathe out into your downward dog and hold. So as you're holding your downward dog, you're tucking your chin in towards the chest. You're relaxing through the forehead the eyes and the jaw, and really grounding through those palms. Good, then look at that space in between the hands, lower to the knees first, or stride or jump. Bring yourself forwards, you know, lengthen through the chest, and relax back down again over those legs. Then from here, press into the feet actively as you come up, looking up or forwards, and then breathe out, hands down. Before the next round, we're gonna come into crescent moon. So take a deep breath in, sweep up. And then as you breathe out, either take one hand onto the hip as you come over, really keeping that chest up, and be mindful of this top arm, trying to bring it by the ear. Either one hand onto the hip, hand shoulder distance, or hands together. And really keep grounding down through the feet. Then breathe in, back to centre, and then breathe out, over. So kicking those hips over to one side, keeping that chest up, and working on bringing this upper arm by the ear. Go, then back to centre, and hands down. Then strong inward breath, up, and then the outward breath, fold forwards. Again, take a deep breath in, lengthen. Then stride or jump, take it back. Tuck the elbows in and lower to the mat or chaturanga. Lengthen through the legs as you come into cobra or upward dog. And then breathing out into your downward dog and hold. Good, so as you're holding your downward dog, remember those feet are about hip distance apart and your hands are about shoulder distance apart or slightly wider. And you're really opening up through those fingers so that you can really stretch through the hands as well. Then look at that space in between the hands, lower to the knees or stride, bring yourself forwards, lengthen through the chest and relax back down again over those legs. Then actively press into the feet as you sweep up looking up or forwards, and then this time breathe out into that crescent moon. So you're looking up or forwards as you come into crescent moon. Keep pressing into the feet, keep squeezing through the stomach as you come back to centre position. Again, lengthen up and breathe out over to that other side. Good, keeping that Ujjayi breath going as you're holding that posture. Then breathe in, back to centre, and breathe out, fold forwards. Again, take a deep breath in, lengthen, breathe out, stride or jump back, and lower. Good, again, lengthening through the legs, through the spine as you come up, and then breathe out, into your downward dog, and hold. So as you hold your downward dog posture, Remember, you're tucking that chin in towards the chest and you're focusing your gaze or your drishti at a space on that wall in between the knees or the belly button. Those bandas are lifted and drawn back. Good, then look at that space in between the hands, lower to the knees or stride or jump, bring it forwards, lengthen and lower. 
And again, strong inward breath as you come up. And then strong outward breath into that crescent moon again. So you're really grounding the feet. You're lifting through the banders and lengthening through those arms. Then breathe in back to centre and breathe out over to that other side. Good. Then breathe in back to centre and breathe out, fold forwards. Again, take a deep breath in, lengthen. Again, this time stride or jump, take it back and lower. Again, rolling over those feet if you're coming into upward dog or cobra and breathing out into your downward dog and hold. So again, lifting that body weight out of the arms and relaxing through the neck, the shoulders, the forehead and the jaw. Then look at that space in between the hands, lower to the knees or stride or jump forwards, lengthen them and lower. Then strong inward breath as you come up. And again, outward breath into that crescent moon. Good. Breathing in back to centre. Again, lengthen through the crown of the head and breathe out to that other side. Good. Then breathe in back to centre and breathe out. Fold forwards. Again, deep breath in, lengthen. Then stride or jump, take it back. Really ground it into the hands and pressing as you lower. Then strong inward breath, cobra or upward dog, and outward breath into your downward dog, and hold. Good, so use that Ujjayi breath to help keep that nervous system calm, and to enable you to sink deeper into the posture. Good, then look at that space in between the hands, lower to the knees or stride or jump forwards, legs down and lower. Then strong inward breath as you come up. And this time, strong outward breath, hands down. Good. Okay, so then from here we're coming into Surya Namaskar B. So Utkatasana first. So again, center yourself. You're squeezing into those knees, you're kicking those ankles apart slightly as you come into Utkatasana. So strong inward breath, squeeze and lift. Then outward breath, fold forwards. Inward breath, lengthen. And then outward breath, take it back and down. Strong inward breath to Cobra or Upward Dog. And then strong outward breath into your Downward Dog. And then lift that right leg up. This time, sweep that right leg through. Either lower down onto that knee, sink forwards, or onto the toe or the flat of the foot as you come up. Then take the posture forwards, stride back and lower. Again, breathing in, upward double cobra, and breathing out, down. Then left leg lifted. We're gonna sweep through. Again, knee, toe, or flat of the foot as you come up into Virabhadrasana 1. Then take the posture forwards, stride back and lower. Again, breathing into Cobra or Upward Dog and breathing out into your Downward Dog and hold. So again, really grounding those palms, lifting through those hips and lengthening through the heels of the feet. Then look at that space in between the hands, lower to the knees or stride or jump, bring it forwards, lengthen and lower. And then squeeze those knees together as you come up into Utkatasana. And then strong outward breath, extend. Good. And again, when you're ready, we're going to take a deep breath in, sweep up, and then breathe out, fold forwards. Take a deep breath in, lengthen, then stride or jump, take it back, and lower. Strong inward breath, cobra, or upward dog, and outward breath, downward dog. And again, right leg lifted, sweep through. 
to knee, toe, or flat of the foot as you come up. Again, take the posture forward, stride back, and lower. Again, breathing in, up, and then breathing out, down. Then left leg lifted, and then sweep through. Again, knee, toe, or flat of the foot as you come up. Take the posture forward, stride back, and lower. Again, breathing in, up, and then breathing out, down, and hold. Good, so really widening those hips, grounding through those palms. You're drawing those shoulder blades away from the ears. Good, then look at that space in between the hands, lower to the knees or stride or jump, bring it forwards, lengthen and lower. Then squeeze the knees together, sink down as you come up and then breathe out, extend. Good, and again, take a deep breath in up and then breathe out, fold forwards. Deep breath in, lengthen. Again, stride or jump, take it back, tuck the elbows in and lower. Again, breathing in, up, and then breathing out, down. Right leg lifted. Now sweep that right leg through. This time, ground that back foot, soften through that right knee, kicking that hip underneath you, and you're lengthening through those arms into the upper dress and two, and focusing through that middle finger. Then sweep the posture forward, stride back, and lower. Then breathing in, up, and then breathing out, down. Then left leg lifted, and sweep through. Again, ground that back right foot, soften that left knee, and again, press into those hands, and focus through that middle finger for the drishti. Then sweep the posture forwards, stride back, and lower. Again, breathing in, up, and breathing out, down, and hold. Good, so catch the breath. And again, relax through the forehead. Let go of any tension around the eyes and the jaw. Then look at that space in between the hands and then lower to the knees or stride or jump forwards like that. And lower. Then from here, squeeze those knees together as you come up into Utkatasana. And then breathe out, extend. Good. And again, take a deep breath in up. And breathe out, fold forwards. Take a deep breath in, lengthen. Then stride or jump back. And lower. Good. Breathing in, up. And breathing out, down. Good. Right leg lifted again. Then sweep that right leg through. Good. This time, ground that back left foot. And you're going to sweep back into that reverse warrior, trying to keep that depth in that front leg and really lift through this top arm. Then sweep the posture forwards, stride back and lower. Breathing in, up and breathing out, down. Then left leg lifted, you're going to sweep through. Ground that back right foot, soften that left knee. And again, reach up and sweep back. And you're really lengthening through this back arm. Good. Then sweep the posture forwards, stride back and lower. Again, breathing in, up and breathing out, down and hold. So really keep that Ujjayi breath strong. Again, feel yourself lifting through Mula Bandha and drawing back through Yudhyana Bandha. Good, then look at that space in between the hands, lower to the knees or stride or jump forwards, lengthen and lower. And again, squeeze those knees together as you come into Utkatasana and then breathe out, extend. Good. Coming into that final um, round, so when you're ready, take a deep breath in up 
and then breathe out, fold forwards. Deep breath in, lengthen. Again, stride or jump, take it back. And lower. Strong inward breath, up. And outward breath, down. Then right leg lifted. In a sweep through. This time, stay on those back toes, left hand down. And you're rotating into that right hip. Trying to keep this pelvis square. And really stretch through that back leg. Then breathe in, back to the centre, stride back and lower. Then breathing in, up and breathing out, down. Left leg lifted, then sweep through. And this time, right hand down and left hand up. Again, rotating into that hip. Remember, you can come onto that back knee if you prefer. Good, then sweep that hand back around. Stride back and lower. Strong inward breath up and then outward breath into your downward dog and hold. So really grounding through these palms, opening through those fingers and trying to lift the body weight out of the arms and into those legs. Good, then look at that space in between the hands, lower to the knees or stride or jump forward, lengthen and lower. Then squeeze those knees together as you come into Utkatasana, looking up or forwards and breathe out, extend. Excellent, well done. Then take a quick um, water break. Okay, so you've had a um, quick drink. We're going to move into our um, standing postures now. Okay, so when you're ready, you're going to take those feet hip distance apart and you've got those toes pointing forwards. Okay, you're really feeling yourself grounding through those feet. Bandas are still engaged, the Muller band is lifted, Yudhiyana band is drawn back. And you're still lifting through the chest and lengthening through the crown of the head. And again, roll the shoulders back and down. And then when you're ready, strong Ujjayi breath in, you're going to sweep up. And as you breathe out, remember from here, coming into that forward bend, you're hinging through the hips, you're keeping that spine long as you hinge through the hips and come down. So you're gonna bind those hands around the shins, around the ankles, or around those big toes. Once you're into that final position, then lengthen that chest forwards because that helps you to tilt that tailbone a little bit further. And then from here, softening through those elbows, you're gonna sink down and over those straight legs. So once you're into that base position, tuck that chin into the chest, so allow yourself to lengthen through the back of the neck. Again, you're still lifting through those knees, you're still grounding through those feet, and you're lengthening that chest towards the mat. Again, then either stay here if this is enough today, Padabhastasana, otherwise if you're comfortable, we're going to take it into Padabhastasana. So lengthen that chest forwards again, and either take the fingertips or the flat of the hands underneath the soles of the feet. And then again, from here, you're softening through those elbows and sinking down. You're tucking that chin in. And you're still being mindful of what those knees are doing. The knees want to naturally bend because they always want to take you into that comfortable position. So keep trying to lift through those knees by engaging through those thighs. Good. Then in all variations, take a deep breath in, lengthen that chest forwards, and breathe out, hands to hips. You're actively pressing into the feet, you're squeezing through the thighs, keeping that stomach strong, as you hinge back up into that centre position. And then from here, we're coming back into our quick vinyasana. So when you're ready, take a deep breath in, sweep up, and then breathe out, fold forwards. Take a deep breath in, lengthen. Then stride or jump, take it back. Again, press into the hands as you lower. Then strong inward breath to cobra or upward dog. And outward breath into your downward dog. Good, then from here, we're gonna lift that left leg up towards the ceiling. You're gonna reach and hold for a moment. So keep pressing back into those hands. And you're lengthening slightly further through the back of that right leg if you can. Then from here, we're going to sweep that left leg through, turn that back heel into the midline, and press into both feet as we come up ready for you, Tita Trikonasana. 
So lengthen through those arms, take a deep breath in, lift. And as you breathe out, you're reaching towards the front of the room. So keep reaching from here, keep pressing into both legs as you reach. Then when the spine won't reach anymore, move through that shoulder joint, take that hand to the shin, the ankle, the fingertips, the mat, or the flat of the hand down, and then reach up through that top arm. So keep pressing into that back foot, keep lifting through that chest, and lengthening through the crown of the head. Good, then keep engaging those thighs, squeeze the stomach as you hinge yourself back up into that center position, and then rotate those feet onto that other side. So bring those hips forward again first, make sure that chest is facing forwards, and arms are long. Then again, inward breath lift, and as you breathe out, you're reaching now towards the other side of the ring. So keep lengthening through that spine, then when it won't move anymore, take that hand to the shin, the ankle, the foot or the mat, and either lift through that left elbow or extend that left arm as you come up into that centre position. So each time keep stretching through the crown of the head and you're either focusing at a space on the wall in front of you or up at this top thumb for the drishti. Good. Then strong inward breath, bring it back to that centre position and then turn both feet forwards. Going to take a deep breath in as you sweep up, looking up or forwards. And then as you breathe out, we're going to sweep forwards and fold into Padottasana A. So from here, again, you've got those heels in line with one another. You're lengthening that chest forwards and either placing the hands onto the blocks or onto the mat. Then when you're ready, you're going to soften through those elbows and sink down in between those legs. So ideally in this position, you've got the length of one of your legs in between your feet and your middle fingers are either in line with those big toes as you soften and lower, or if you're comfortable today, start walking those hands slightly further back in between those legs as you lower towards the mat. Again, hip chins tucked in, and you're relaxing through the forehead, the eyes, and the jaw. And take a deep breath in, lengthen through the chest, and breathe out, hands to hips. Remember to soften those knees if you feel it in the back. Press it into the feet as you hinge back up to centre position. And then open up through those arms, and you're striding back into Summer CPT. Good, then take a deep breath in as you sweep up, and then breathe out, fold forwards. Take a deep breath in, lengthen. In a stride or jump, take it back and lower. Again, strong inward breath to cobra or upward dog, and outward breath into your downward dog. Good, this time you lift that right leg up towards the ceiling, reach and hold. And again, keep pressing back into those hands, really reaching through that top leg and lengthening further through the back of that left leg. Then from here, you're going to sweep that leg through, push off that back foot as you come forward for that half stance, and then come up into that centre position. So with your half stance, your feet should be slightly offline, and your left foot is pointing to about an 11 o'clock clock face position. So these hips need to be facing the short edge of your mat, then lift as you come into that slight back bend. And then as you breathe out, you're going to fold forwards, hinging through those hips. And from here, if that helps, you can either take a block for your left hand, either tall sideways this way or this way. Or you can bring that hand to the shin, the ankle, the foot, or the mat. You're going to lengthen forwards first, but keep pressing into that back foot. And then rotate into that hip for Parasvita Trikonasana. Good. And take a deep breath in, release that hand back round and down. Press into both feet as you come back up to that centre position and then rotate round to the other side. But then take the time to take that right foot out, hips facing the short edge of the mat and foot's about a one, one o'clock clock face position. Then lift and as you breathe out, fold forwards. This time right hand down onto the left shin, ankle, foot, 
or mat, lengthen forward, and then again, twist into that hip. So you're reaching up through that top hand. Good. And really grounding through that back foot, focusing up at that top thumb for the drishti, or a space on the wall in front of you. Good. Then release that hand back round and down. Press into those feet as you hinge back up into that centre position. And then from here, you're going to turn those feet to the long length of your mat again. Again, then take a deep breath in, sweep heart. And then as you breathe out, hands to hips. You're going to lift through the head and the chest. Really press into both feet as you come into that slight back bend, pressing those hips forwards. And then hinge forwards. Good. So from here, either keep those hands onto the waist or take those hands into the small of the back as you squeeze those elbows together and lower into Padottasana B. Good. So with Padottasana B, you're squeezing those quads slightly further and you're squeezing those bandas deeper to help pull you forwards towards the mat. And you're squeezing those shoulder blades in towards one another. Good. Then when you're ready, take a deep breath in. Soften those knees again if you need to as you hinge back up into that centre position. Then open up through those arms and strike back into Samasiti. Then take a deep breath in, sweep up. And then breathe out, fold forwards. Take a deep breath in, lengthen. Then stride or jump, take it back. Tuck the elbows in and lower. Strong inward breath, cobra or upward dog. And outward breath into your downward dog. This time you're gonna lift that right leg up. And you're gonna sweep that right leg through. Into your Tita Pasvakanasana, so nice. you're turning that back heel into the midline. You're bringing that right forearm onto the thigh. Just be mindful of that fit position and knee position. Lift that shoulder towards the ceiling and then sweep that top arm up and over. Looking up at that top thumb or a space on the wall in front of you. So you're either staying here or remember you're taking that hand down to the shin, ankle, fingertips or flatter the hand down to the mat. Keep lifting that chest, keep grounding into that back foot. And for those of you who are comfortable, you're gonna take it into that binding variation. But all variations, keep lifting that top shoulder, lifting the chest, and sweeping that arm over. Or lengthening through the spine. Good. And strong inward breath as you hinge yourself up into that center position. Keep pressing into that bottom foot, keep lengthening through those arms. Good, and just check to see whether both wrists are in line with one another. And strong inward breath, open up through that leg, we're going straight onto that other side, so that back heel kicks out slightly. Those hips are forward and chest is open. Then keep pressing into that back foot as you sink into that thigh and reach that top arm up and over. So you wanna feel that stretch from that top finger all the way down to that bottom foot first. Then either stay here if this is enough this morning, or hand to the shin, ankle, fingertips, or flatter that hand down. But again, as you're doing this, you're lifting that chest and lengthening further. And again, for those of you who'd like to, you can take it into that binding variation, but make sure you keep pressing into that bottom foot and those banders stay nice and strong. Good. And strong inward breath, using that Ujjayi breathing, come up into that centre position. Good. So those arms are really strong and long and pressing into those feet. Good. Then deep Ujjayi breath in as you extend through that leg, turn both feet forwards. Take a deep breath in as you sweep these hands up. Then this time as you breathe out, sweep those hands round and into the back of the body. Interlock those fingers, stretch those arms open, squeezing those shoulder blades together. And then as you breathe out, you're going to fold forwards into Padatasana C. So keep squeezing from here. You're drawing that chin in towards the chest 
and you're lengthening those arms behind you. So you're focusing still either at the tip of the nose or a space on that wall in between the knees. Keep grounding through both feet, keeping this strong. And then when you're ready, you're going to hinge yourself back up into that centre position, open up through those arms, and then stride back into Samasthiti. Excellent. Then from here, quick vinyasana, take a deep breath in, sweep up, and then breathe out, fold forwards. Take a deep breath in, lengthen, stride or jump back, tuck the elbows in, and lower. Strong inward breath, upward double cobra, and then outward breath, downward dog. Good. From here, we're going to lift that left leg up towards the ceiling. We're going to sweep that left leg through. I'm just going to turn around so you can see. Okay, so from here, right hand inside that left foot and a foot in that lunge variation. Okay, from here, either keep those hands onto the thigh and really focus on stretching through that back heel so we open up the hip flexor areas. Either bring the hands onto the hips or you're going to sweep those hands up towards the ceiling, looking forwards or up at these top thumbs. And if your shoulders are feeling comfortable today, you can also work on bringing those arms towards one another, but you want to try to bring that upper arm back towards those ears. So keep stretching through that back leg, keep engaging through these bandages. Then in your next deep out with breath, we're going to take this right arm either to the opposite side of that left thigh and hands into that prayer position. Remember our slightly lower intensity, you can keep it inside that um, foot if you prefer and then reach that arm up towards the ceiling. Or if you're comfortable, you're going to take that arm over from that prayer position and then extend through that arm and either reach this left hand up towards the ceiling or you're going to extend through that left arm towards the front of the room. You're either focusing up at that top thumb or focusing at a space on the wall in front of you for the drishti. Well done. Then from here, you're going to sweep these hands round and down, push off this back foot, you're going to stride forward, lengthen through the chest and relax down over those legs. Good. Then from here, we're going to roll the spine section by section, so tuck that chin in, keep pressing into those feet as you come all the way up into that standing position and take the shoulders back and down. Before we go on to the other side, we're coming into Utkatasana. So you're going to squeeze those knees together and then sweep those hands up. So again, thinking about that lower back area, how's it feeling this morning? You're either pushing that tailbone further out behind you and keeping the depth in those legs, or you're going to tuck the tailbone under slightly but really keep lengthening through those arms. And again, focusing forwards or up at these thumbs. Good. Then bring those palms together, press these hands into one another as you fold forwards. And then you're gonna take that left elbow towards the opposite side of that right knee or thereabouts. Keep drawing, so sometimes it helps just to encourage that elbow slightly over but then draw those shoulder blades actively away from the ears. Staying here, we're gonna open up through those arms. Good, and reaching that top hand up towards the ceiling. Keep lengthening forwards through the crown of the head as you reach up through that top hand. Well done, the strong inward breath, release. And then outward breath, open up through the back of those legs. And take a deep inward breath. And as you breathe out, you roll that spine again, section by section, up into that standing position. And take the shoulders back and down. And again, back into Utkatasana. So squeeze those knees together and sweep up. So shoulder blades drawn down, but arms are long. Band is strong. And that Ujjayi breath is strong. Good. Then from here, bring those hands together again. Press the hands into one another as you fold forward. And then this time, take that right arm to the opposite side of that left knee or thereabouts. 
So draw the shoulder blades away from the ears, stretch that head forwards, and then I will stay here. We're gonna open up through those arms, and again, really reaching through that top hand. Good. Then take a deep breath in, release that hand round and down, and then breathe out, open up through those knees. Deep breath in, and then as you breathe out, you're going to roll that spine again, section by section, up into that standing position, and take those shoulders back and down. Then back into Utkatasana, uh, sorry, not Utkatasana, into um, our quick vinyasana. So take a deep breath in, sweep up, and then breathe out, fold forwards. Take a deep breath in, lengthen, stride or jump, take it back, tuck the elbows in, and lower. Strong inward breath, upward dog cobra, and then strong outward breath into your downward dog. This time you're going to lift that left leg up towards the ceiling. Good. And sweep that left leg through. Good. Really stretching through that back heel just for a moment. Lift up through that chest. But we're staying down into that low, um, high lunge position. And open up through those fingers again. From here, we're going to stride back. We're going to hold our plank position. So you're drawing those shoulder blades away from the ears. Really lengthening through the heels of the feet. Good. Lift the bottom up if you need to. From here, we're then going to stride that right leg through. And then we're coming into that high lunge position this time. So lengthen through that chest first, stretch through that back heel, and really press down into this front leg. Then from here, hands onto those hips. Keep lifting through the banders. Keep lifting through that chest. Either staying here, we're going to sweep those hands up towards the ceiling. And again, as with that other side, keep stretching through that back leg. And then if it feels comfortable, you can interlock through those hands. And again, but draw those shoulders down. Good. So keep that breath going. Then from here, we're going to release this hand. We're sweeping this hand inside that right foot and rotating into that hip. Otherwise, from here, I'm just going to turn around so you can see. Otherwise, from here, we're taking that hand over that thigh. Good. So again, draw those shoulder blades away from the ears and down the back. Either staying here or hand down towards the mat. Reach that top hand up. And then that final position, lengthen that top arm forwards. And you're either focusing up on that thumb or a space on the wall in front of you. Good. Well done. And from here, we're going to release this hand back round and down. Bring yourself back to that centre position. Then push off this back foot and stride forwards. Lengthen and lower. Good. And from here, we're going to roll the spine again, section by section, all the way up into that standing position. And then take those shoulders back and down. From here, we're going to come into tree and then into your Tita Hasta Padagustasana. So in our tree posture, again, you can use your walls around your home for balance if you want to. First position is we're going to take that right foot just above that left ankle. Remember, all the balancing postures are focused on the balance rather than the flexibility. Keep pressing into that left foot and be mindful about what's happening with those hips. If you're comfortable today, we can then bring that foot slightly higher above the knee, but keep pressing that foot into the thigh. If you're still comfortable there, we're going to bring this foot up towards the thigh and again keep pressing in. Good. Then from here, today we're going to focus on this part and try to keep those hips facing forwards. Either bring those hands together in front of you for prayer or if you're comfortable, sweep those hands up towards the ceiling and again draw the shoulders down. And then gradually with those shoulders drawn down, keep bringing those hands towards one another. Just to the point, as soon as you feel these elbows starting to bend, all those shoulders coming up, stop, because then the shoulders have got to that position where they're comfortable today. Good, keep using the banders here. Keep using that breath. 
Good. We're going to stay on this same leg. We're going to overload it a little bit. So we're going to bring this right foot in. Good. Now I'm going to take hold behind that right thigh, around that shin, ankle, or big toe. Then lift that knee slightly higher. Keep lifting up through that top leg. Keep squeezing here. Either hand to the hip, hand out to the side, or lift it up towards the ceiling. And then start pressing into that foot. So again, draw those shoulders back. Keep lengthening through the crown of the head and focus through that drishti point as if you're trying to look at something on the wall the other side. Good. So you use your breath in and out is strong. Good. Then from here, you're going to soften through that leg. Try to keep that balance as you relax that foot back down and then release through that hand. Well done, take a deep breath in, sweep up. And then as you breathe out, fold forwards. Good, take a deep breath in, lengthen through the chest. And then relax back down. We're gonna roll back up to standing. So section by section, actively pressing into the feet. As you come up into that standing position and take those shoulders back and down. Good, then into tree on the other side. So open up those right toes, press the foot down into the mat. And then from here, foot just above their ankle. Good, same here if this is enough. And hands either onto the hips or lengthen through those arms or hands together. Or take those, that foot just above the knee. Or if you're comfortable, I'm going to bring it all the way up. If you've got to this top position, focus on bringing that knee to the wall behind you today and keeping those hips forwards. Good, feel Mula Banda lifted. Feel Udiyala Banda drawn back and then hands together or extended. Three more deep breaths in here, really actively pressing into that supporting foot, lifting through the pelvic floor and drawing back through that belly button. Well done, then we're gonna try and maintain that balance and keep looking through that drishti point on the wall in front of you or window in front of you. Good, and then from here, bring that left foot forward, hand behind the thigh, shin, ankle, or big toe. Lift up first again, lifting that knee, and then either hand to the side or up to the ceiling for, to help you with that balance. Keep pressing down, keep squeezing in, keep lifting and stretching. Good. Well done, then from here we're going to try and keep that balance again as we lower that left leg down to the mat. Good, so let go. Keep pressing into that right foot as you then lower that left leg down. Good, then when you're ready, we're going to take a deep breath in, sweep up, and then breathe out, fold forwards. Take a deep breath in, lengthen, then stride or jump, take it back, tuck the elbows in, and lower. Strong inward breath. Upward double cobra and then outward breath into your downward dog. Good. From here, we're going to lower down onto those shins. We're going to roll the fleshy parts of those calves outside the side of you. So remember, if you've got those blocks there, you can take two blocks or one block in between those feet. You're lowering down, but it's trying to make sure that those toes are pointing back behind you. Good. And then from here, into eagle arms. So we're going to lengthen through those arms and soften those elbows. Take that left arm over the right, and then lift these elbows up, and then take the hands away from the face. And again, if it's comfortable here, you're gonna tuck that chin in towards the chest, and you're really stretching those shoulder blades away from one another. Well done, then from here, release those hands, relax those shoulders. Okay, then we're gonna to start to lower down, so if it's enough to stay seated, do so. Otherwise, you're gonna tuck that tailbone under. And remember, first of all, you're working on coming down to those forearms. Get us staying here, if this is enough. I'm gonna do it twice, that might let those quads relax a little bit, but you wanna to try to feel that opening through the front of the hip as well. Good, then we're going to actively press into those um, forearms, into the hands, and then press down into those shins as you come back up. 
Yeah, then from here, open up through those hands, flick up through those toes. Now either, if you're comfortable, you're gonna stay here, get it all lower down into child's pose. Otherwise, we're gonna take this left hand off the mat, either to the back of that right thigh, calf area, or towards that ankle. You're really pressing back through this right arm, and you're trying to drop that shoulder slightly if the body's allowing it. But make sure you feel comfortable here and keep pressing back into those heels. Good, then from here we're going to come to the other side. So bring that left hand back, recentre first, and then if it's comfortable, take that right hand off to that left thigh, calf, or ankle. Really keep pressing back. Making sure that this hand feels an old arm feels nice and strong and the hands actively pressing downwards. Good. Then bring that hand back to that centre position. And then from here we're going to lower back into our hero posture. Okay, so roll those calves out again, either side here. Lengthen those arms out in front of you, soften those elbows. This time right arm over left. As you bring those hands into that position, elbows up and hands away from the face. And again, tuck that chin in and stretch those shoulder blades away from one another. Well done, then release those arms, relax those shoulders. Yeah, then from here, I'm going to tuck that tailbone under again. So remember, keep these knees grounded. Sometimes it helps to take the legs slightly apart, but just be mindful not to take them too far away because you want to open up the front of the hip flexors. Good, then you're lowering down as far as the body's allowing you to go. And then from here, if it's allowing you to go all the way down today, then do so. But again, make sure that those knees are grounded. Make sure that you're still engaging through Muller Bandha, so the pelvic floor is still lifted, belly button is still drawn back. But you're really trying to let go of any tension that you might be feeling in this hip flexor area or in those quads as well. You're trying to relax through those shoulders. Good, then from here I'm going to press down into those hands. Good, keep pushing into those arms as you come back up into that centre position. Then press down into those shins as you lift up. Excellent. Okay, then back into our quick vinyasana. So you're going to press those hands down into the mat, extend through those legs. Good. Then look at that space in between those hands. Lower to the knees or stride or jump, come forwards, lengthen and lower. Then strong inward breath as we come up, looking up or forwards and then outward breath, hands down. And again, take a deep breath in up. And as you breathe out, you're gonna fold forwards. Take a deep breath in, lengthen. And we're gonna stride or jump as you take it back. Tuck the elbows in and lower. Again, breathing into cobra or upward dog. And breathing out into your downward dog. Good, and from here, we're gonna lift this right knee through the hands as we come into our king pigeon. Yeah, so bring that the right knee through and walk that left leg out behind you first. So see how far that left leg will go out. And if it feels right today, you can play with this foot position. So you can take it slightly further away from that hip. Good, or you can leave it where it is. But as you adjust that foot position, bring those hips back so they're facing the mat, okay? Rather than staying on that right hip slightly. Okay, so you wanna keep that back thigh parallel to the mat. And then once you're in that position, remember you've got those blocks, you can put underneath that hip slightly, one or two blocks. When you're ready, you're gonna lengthen through the chest and lower down towards the mat. Either relaxing that forehead onto the mat, onto the blocks, or onto those hands. So we're going to take two more deep breaths here, really relaxing through those shoulders, relaxing through the neck, and still lengthening through that back leg and letting go of any tension around that right hip. Good, 
Good, then from here, gonna press into those hands, lift through that chest, good, flick up through those back toes, and then stride back into that downward dog. So either keep softening through those knees, good, or stay static in that downward dog, it's up to you. But you're still sucking in through the stomach here. Good, then this time you're gonna lift that left knee off, so sweep that left knee through. Okay, so again, from here, walk that right leg down the mat up behind you first. Good, so feel yourself opening up through that back leg if you can. And again, from here, if you're slightly high away from the mat, then pop that block underneath. Play with that foot position so it feels right for you, but be mindful that you don't feel any pain in that knee. Good, again, lifting through the head and the chest first. And then once you're comfortable, keep leading through that chest and lower down. So once you're down, remember you're relaxing that neck. You're letting go of any tension around that forehead, the eyes and the jaw. You're relaxing through those shoulders and letting go of any tension around that outer hip. Good, and when you're ready, press into these hands again, lift, lead through that chest first if you can, then flick up through those back toes and stride back into that downward dog. Again, either keeping it static or pulsing through those knees. Good, then once you're into that final position, we're gonna bring one shin to the mat, then we're gonna bring the other shin over, and then we're gonna roll back onto that bottom and lengthen those legs out in front of you. So pull the fleshy parts of the bottom out from underneath you and really lengthen through the heels of the feet. Again, lifting through that chest, drawing those shoulders back and down, and you're into Tatasana. Good, okay, then from here, take a deep breath in, sweep heart. Then as you breathe out, you're gonna fold forwards into Paschimottasana. So remember from here, hands either onto the shins, the ankles, those toes. If you've got a strap, you can use that strap around those ankles, or you can use a block in front of those heels as well. But all positions, once you're done, lift that, rip that chest, and then from there, soften those elbows and sink down over those legs. I'm gonna stay here for three more deep breaths, so breathing in fully, and breathing out deeply. Keep lengthening through the crown of the head with each outward breath. Then when you're ready, we're gonna roll yourselves back up into that seated position. Either lower forwards again into another forward bend if you prefer, or we're gonna come up into Pusvatasana, our upward plank or our upward table. So for plank position, roll those knees inward slightly and really stretch through those big toes. Otherwise, and in both positions, so bring those fingertips so they're facing forwards. You're going to squeeze those shoulder blades together to lift that chest. In table, you've got those feet hip distance apart. And then as you breathe out, you're lifting up into that upward table position. So here, you're still really pressing into those feet, really pressing into those hands, and lifting the hips and the chest. Either looking forwards or relaxing that head back depending on how that next feeling this morning. Then relax yourself back down into that seated position. Lengthen that left leg out to your front of you, and you're gonna keep that right knee bent. Okay, we're coming into Marichyasana um, C. So first of all, lengthen through that spine. Remember, if you feel slightly slouched here, pop yourself onto a block. So we need that nice tall spine. Those toes are pointing up to the ceiling on that left leg and you're rotating into that right hip, working on getting both sides of the chest to the opposite side of this thigh. Either a nice tight hug and look over that shoulder, or bring that left hand to the hip, or that left hand underneath the foot as you look over. Good. And take a deep breath in as we bring our gaze back to that centre, and then bring yourself back round. From here, we're going to relax that knee out to the side as we come into Yanushirasana A. 
So take a deep breath in, sweep heart, and breathe out, fold forward. Lengthen through that chest and draw those shoulder blades away from the ears. Good. You're either focusing at that big toe for the drishti, or focusing at the tip of the nose, put all space on that shin. Good. Keep trying to open up through that waist here, relax that knee. And either stay in this traditional position or we're taking it into the revolve variation. So revolve variation, left hand to left shin, ankle or big toe. Soften this elbow here and then we're lifting that shoulder towards the ceiling and then sweeping that top arm up and over. We're trying to feel that increased stretch through that deep lower back area and possibly under that arm. Sometimes it helps them to Bring that left hand onto that right knee or onto the mat as you're reaching towards that foot. Good, and deep breath in, sweep up. I'm going to sweep this right knee back up into that centre position. Bring that left knee forward and then squeeze those knees together. Lengthen those arms out and you're coming into Navasana. So remember you can support here or here. And you can either take it into that three-quarter position or into that full variation where that chest is up and you're looking forwards. Good. Then from here we're going to cross those shins over, squeeze them together, draw those knees in and then relax those feet down. Well done, then you lengthen those legs back out in front of you and you're either going to come into a forward bend or you're going to come into upward plank or upward table. So squeeze those shoulder blades together here, knees bent or legs straight as you lift up and over. So again you're aiming for those big toes to come down to the mat. Well done, and then relax back down into that centre position. Except from here, we're going to come round and onto our other side now from a Richiasa C. So nice tall spine, and then you're going to rotate into that hip, looking over that opposite shoulder. Just going to put the camera on pause for a moment. So keep using that Ujjayi breath and those bandas. Okay, so we are in Marichyasana C. So remember, with this posture, we're taking that nice, um, tight rotation, trying to get both sides of the chest to the opposite side of the leg. So it might be that nice, tight hug, hand towards the hip, or hand underneath the foot, but all variations are lengthening up to the ceiling, and you're looking over that opposite shoulder. You're really squeezing in through the stomach. Well done, and breathe in, bring yourself back to that centre position. Then you're going to rotate that knee out to the side for Yana Shirasana A. So again, make sure these hips are facing the short edge of that mat, that spine is nice and strong, uh, nice and tall. Take a deep breath in, and then breathe out, fold forwards. So you're lengthening, you're tucking that chin in slightly, remember for that chin lock, and you're really lengthening through the crown of the head towards that big toe either using the strap or using that block behind the bottom of that foot if you want to deepen that stretch. Either going to stay here, Nyanu Shurasana A, or we're going to take it into that revolved variation. So this time right hand either onto that shin, that ankle, or around that big toe. So remember our binding position. And then from here we're going to lift that shoulder up towards the ceiling, staying here if this is enough, we're going to sweep that top arm up and over. Again, keep lengthening through the crown of the head. Good. Keeping those bandits engaged and strong. And either focusing at that thumb for the drishti or a space on that wall in front of you. And we can also take that hand into that alternative variation. Good. And keep the band as strong, keep the spine nice and strong as you come back to that centre position. We're going to sweep that leg up. Then from here, bring that right knee towards the left. We're coming into Navasana, our second position. So again, you can keep that um, light um, heart here. Keep that chest up, keep those shoulders relaxed. And imagine you're trying to look through that space on the wall in front of you. Still tucking in, but lifting slightly through the crown of that head. But making sure you can feel these legs working, you can feel that stomach working. 
then cross those shins the other way, squeeze them together, draw those knees back, and then relax those feet down, well done. Okay, so then from here, we're gonna lengthen those legs out again in front of you. Before we come into our next postures, we're gonna do three roll downs or roll ups, but again, we're making sure that we're really working that core. You wanna keep those legs relaxed. Okay, so if these feet are coming up off the floor, then you're not relaxing these hip flexors here. So we want the back to do the work and the stomach to do the work. So we're coming into that nice tall position, knees bent, all legs straight, it's up to you, as long as they're relaxed. Deep breath in, and as you breathe out, roll under through that tailbone first, keep lowering down, just to the point where you can keep this engaged. When this wants to let go, you've gone too far. So it doesn't matter how far you go down, as long as the stomach's engaged, breath in, then as you breathe out, you're rolling back up into that top position, then head up and chest up. And again, breathe out, roll down, breath in, and as you breathe out, keep that chin in, keep rolling back up to that center position. Head up, chest up. And again, breathing out, rolling down. Breath in. And then breathe out, roll back up into that top position. Again, nice tall spine. Good, and from here, we're coming into our last Navasana. So draw those legs back towards you, squeeze those bandas tightly, and then lift up into that top position. And if the stomach or the legs are aching now, really focus through that drishti point. Keep everything, keep the shoulders, the neck, the forehead, the face relaxed. And really squeeze those legs together and lift that chest. Two more breaths. And one more breath. And no crossing of those shins, draw those knees back and relax those legs down. Well done, good. Okay, and then from here, we're going to come into our um, double pigeon. Okay, so we've already warmed up through those inner thighs slightly um, with that king pigeon pose. Now we're coming into double pigeon or shoelaces. Okay, so remember with this one, you've got lots of alternatives. So ankle roughly in line with that knee or thereabouts. We've got that left shin down first, and then we're going to bring that right leg up. Good. So you're going to work towards bringing this foot on top of that left knee. Okay, if it needs to come slightly back more towards the hip, then that's fine, but we're aiming for it to be on that knee. Then bringing that body weight back down onto those hips. If that knee doesn't go all the way down, that's fine. Okay, remember we've got a block or a couple of blocks, or we can use thick books at home um, to support that leg and let those outer hip um, muscles relax. Otherwise, if they are going down today, then we can either stay seated and really focus on that nice tall position. Or from here, if you're comfortable, leading through that chest, going to lower down over those shins. So you're going to keep relaxing those shoulders. You're still using those bandits, and you're still lengthening that chest forwards. And sometimes it helps to ground the hands and pull those arms slightly back towards you to help lengthen more through those hips. Really relaxing and letting go of that tension around that outer hip. Yeah, then from here, lifting back up into that centre position. And in between, we're going to lengthen those legs and we're going to come into a wide angled forward bend before we go onto that other side. So it's actually the same with the standing forward bend, toes pointing up to the ceiling. Sometimes it helps to pull the bottom out behind you. Yeah, then take that deep breath in, sweep up, and then as you breathe out, fold forwards. Good. So either taking those hands onto the shins, the ankles, or those big toes, if that feels more comfortable. And again, keeping that chest up as you soften through those elbows. Alternatively, relax those hands down towards the mat, but keep leading through that chest and engaging through those thighs. Good, and from here we're going to hinge through the hips again to keep that back nice and long, keep the stomach engaged as you come back to that centre position and take hold of the back of those legs and bring these feet back towards you. Before we go into king pi uh, double, double, double pigeon on the other side, we're going to come into that seated lift, so elbows tucked in, hands pressing down into the mat, squeeze the stomach, squeeze the thighs and then press and lift. 
Good, keep holding, keep looking forward once you're up. Good, don't look down at those legs, look forward. Good, and relax back down. Good, then from here, double pigeon on the other side or shoelaces. Good, so from here, we've now got that right knee towards the mat. Ankle roughly in line with that knee. Lift up through that left foot. Good. And then from here, again, remember you can either use that block. Good. Um, underneath that knee, you can stay seated if you prefer, keeping that chest up, relaxing through the shoulders and softening through those eyes. Good. Or you're going to fold forwards. So two more deep breaths in here. Breathing in fully and out deeply. Well done, and press into those legs as you come back to that centre position. Uncurl, lengthen those legs back out in front of you, then back into that seated lift. So elbows tucked in, stomach engaged, spine nice and tall, then fold forwards, press and lift. Good, so keep pushing down, keep squeezing, keep lifting, and relax, well done. Okay, and then from here we're going to come into our belly kanasana. Okay, so belly kanasana, remember you've got those um, feet together, and then you're supporting those shins as you relax those knees towards the mat. Now first time when it really doesn't matter how far they go down, as long as you can feel that stretch here. Okay, so remember you can either use blocks on top of those thighs, good, or you can take blocks underneath the feet or underneath the bottom. So whichever position works for you, so you feel that, um, that stretch through those adductors on the inner thighs. If you're comfortable, we're going to close those eyes. So we take our next four deep breaths. So really allowing yourself to let go of any tension around the inner thighs, the outer hips. Letting go of any tension around the lower back, the pelvis. And again, relaxing through the neck and those shoulders. Good, then take, release those blocks, take hold of those knees and lift these knees back into that center position. We'll give them a little bit of a hug. So before we go into our second round, from here, we're gonna come into our seated balance. Okay, so you're gonna bring those legs back towards you. Okay, you're gonna take hold around the shins, the ankles, or those big toes. Okay, then eyes looking forwards. Lean back very slightly as if you're going into that Navasana position. And then you're gonna to start to uncurl through those legs. So just the point where you can keep this lower back lifted. When that, when the chest and the lower back starts rounding, that's when you're going to roll back. So keep that chest lifted and keep pulling back through those legs. Good. Then from here, you're going to soften through those knees. Try to keep that balance as you lower all the way again back down towards the mat. And then from here, we're coming back into Balakonasana. Okay, so again, support those legs as they go down. Good. So relaxing through those inner thighs. And again, sometimes it helps to roll those inner thighs upwards slightly. And either staying upright or folding forwards. So taking three more deep breaths in here. Again, closing those eyes, if that helps. So you really want to allow the body to be engaged in the posture, but relaxed, so that you can let those knees relax down towards the mat. Take hold of those knees, lift those legs back up into that centre position. 
And, and then from here, we're going to come into our seated balance for the second time. Yeah, so again, nice tall spine, bring those legs back towards you. Take hold of the shins, the ankles of those big toes, lean back and lengthen through those legs. You're either going to stay here or you're going to take it into that wide variation. But again, eyes looking forward and keep the spine nice and tall. Keep the stomach nice and engaged. And then bring those legs back to that centre position. Soften through those knees and relax those feet back down to the mat. Extend them from here. For those of you who'd like to go into dolphins, then pause the video and go into your dolphins first. Otherwise, we're going to lower ourselves all the way down to the mat and we're going to go into our um, bridge postures. Okay, so you can either go into dolphins and headstand first, or you can lower all the way down to the mat and into bridge. Okay, so from here we're going to roll ourselves down to the mat. Good. Tuck that chin slightly in towards the chest, so you're lengthening through the back of the neck. And then from here you've got those heels back towards the bottom, so remember you want to try to touch those heels with those middle fingers or thereabouts. And then from here, you're going to roll that spine up into that top position. And once you're into that top position, you're really pressing into the feet. You're lifting these hips up. You're lifting that chest up. And you can in either use those hands to support the lower back or interlock those hands and stretch those clasped hands further towards the feet. Staying here for three more deep breaths, really grounding through the feet and lifting through those hips. And release those hands. You know, relax that spine all the way back down to the mat. Good, then from here, we take a rest breath. And sometimes it's quite nice to bring those knees into the chest as we go into that rest breath. And then from here, we're going to relax those feet back down to the mat. Again, making sure you're taking it back to that top position so you can feel the middle, uh, sorry, feel those heels or touch them with those middle fingers. And again, you're going to roll the spine back up into that top position. So again, hands either onto the bottom, interlift and stretch, but really actively pushing down into the feet. So this is still, there is a finishing posture, it's still a strong posture. You're really trying to push into those feet to open up further through the front of the hips, through those thighs and through the chest. So it is a back bend, and we're really trying to lift up into that back bend. And then relax down. And again, just drawing that tailbone up so that lower back goes down to the mat first, and then round. And again, from here, bring those knees into the chest. And then you're either going to lift up into your third bridge posture or you're going to take it into your lying spinal twist. So if you're coming into that lying spinal twist, those hands are on either side of you, into that crucifix position, palms down or the back of the hands up. And then from here, you're either keeping those feet onto the mat and you're rolling those knees over to one side. Or for slightly higher intensity, you're lifting those knees off, <laughs> knees in line with the hips, and then you're rolling those knees over into that lying spinal twist, but you're only taking them as far as you can keep that opposite shoulder and palm into the mat. And sometimes it's nice just to bring that bottom hand round and gently on top of the other leg, and then turn that head over that opposite shoulder. Then from here, you're going to bring those knees back to that centre position. And then take those legs over to the other side. So taking five deep breaths in this final position. 
Again, we're low, we're slowing down that breathing weight now, so it's a strong inward breath and a long and strong outward breath. Then bring those knees back to that centre position, pressing those hands into the mat as you do so, and then relax those legs down. Again, then from here, before we go into the shoulder sun sequence, if you want to take a quick drink, then do so. So, just going to bring up, just going to put the video on pause whilst you have a quick drink. Okay, so we're going to come into the shoulder stand sequence now. If you prefer not to do the shoulder stand, that's absolutely fine. And especially if you've got too much tension in the back of the neck or anything like that, then I advise not to do the shoulder stand. Okay, so one of those alternatives is you're lying down onto your mat and you can um, lengthen those legs up towards the ceiling. And then from here, you're keeping a light grip around those legs. So we, in this position, we're still getting the benefits of the shoulder stand for the legs, but we're not lifting up um, into that upper back area. Alternatively, you're going to take your mat um, and shuffle it to a wall. So you're going to come side on onto that wall, get your hips as tight as you can towards the wall, then you're going to lower down, and then you're lifting those legs up towards the ceiling. Okay, and you've got the wall to support you here. You can either take those hands out to the side or stretch those arms out behind the head. Okay, for those of you coming into the shoulder stand sequence, remember you've got those different levels. So you need to make sure you're listening to the body, especially when you're at home. Okay, you're tucking that chin into the chest first. And then from here, you're going to bring those hands to the mat and you're gently rocking yourself up. So the free quarter shoulder stand, elbows are tucked under, hands are into that pelvis area. Once you're any higher than this, you never turn your head from side to side once you're in a position. Then from here, you're going to start lifting those legs up towards the ceiling. Good. So you're still in that free quarter shoulder stand here and the body weight is into those arms and that's supporting you. You're still engaging the legs and lifting them up. Then for those top positions, you're then working on bringing those hands further towards the rib cage. And then stay here, working between pointed toes and flexed feet. So after about five, sorry, anywhere between um, 10 to 20 breaths, you're then going to work on hinging through those hips, again, listening to the body as you take yourself into Halasana. And then from Halasana, either keep the hands here or you're going to work on interlocking those hands and stretching those clasped hands towards the mat. You stay here for anywhere between five to 10 breaths, really relaxing through the back of the neck. And our final posture is our ear pinching pose. You're bringing those knees towards the ears. And then again, you can gently use those hands to take you deeper into the posture. Then after those five to 10 breaths, spend longer in these postures, you're then going to slowly uncurl yourself back down to the mat. If it's not feeling right today to go into Matyasana, the counter stretch, then again, listen to the body and come into that energy lock instead. Otherwise, from here, we're going to come into Matyasana, our fish posture. So from our fish posture, we're taking those hands towards the glutes, the top of the glutes and you're pressing the forearms into the mat. Those toes are pointing up towards the ceiling. You're actively pushing down into those forearms and you're lifting that chest. And then from here, you're taking the crown of the head back towards the mat and then opening up those elbows slightly so that head touches the mat, but the body weight is into those upper arms. Good. There's lots of different variations from here. But I prefer the focus for this stretch should be opening up the front of the neck and the front of the shoulders. So there isn't 
um, you know, it's nice to really focus on pressing the forearms into the mat to help you to achieve that. Then curl the head and shoulders, looking back up at those toes to strengthen the neck first. And then you're lowering down to the mat. Then from here, we're coming up into our energy lock. So it's good to do our energy lock even when we're doing self-practice at home. Okay, so either roll yourself onto your side first or you know, bring those knees into the chest and roll yourself up. And then from here, we're going to take legs into a comfortable position. It doesn't matter where they are. You're going to take one hand around the wrist, around the back of the body, or you're going to cross those arms behind the back of the body. Go ahead and tuck that chin in. Stay upright if you prefer. Or you're going to fold towards the mat. We're taking five deep breaths in here. So really focus on that long and deep inward breath and that full and deep outward breath. You're letting go of those bandas now. You're softening that Ujjayi breath. With your next deep inward breath, you're drawing that breath into the stomach. So you're expanding and opening the stomach and expanding and opening the rib cage. And as you breathe out, you're closing the rib cage and closing the stomach. And after those five breaths, we're coming into our mudra. So you're taking the middle finger, index fingers and thumbs together, palms pointing up towards the ceiling. And again, you're closing those eyes, and really focusing on allowing the body to rest and relax really lengthening up towards the ceiling through that spine. Letting go of any tension around the face and the jaw. Letting go of any tension around the neck and the shoulders. And also letting go of any stress or tension through the upper back, middle back, lower back and pelvis. Focusing on that three-stage breathing, so breathing into the stomach, breathing into the ribcage, and then breathing out, closing the ribcage, and closing the stomach. And when you've taken those five breaths, we're lowering ourselves down to the mat and into Matiasana. Sorry, Shavasana. Okay, so you're taking opposite ankle out to opposite um, part of the mat and opposite elbow out to opposite side of the mat. And those palms pointing up towards the ceiling. Then tuck the chin in slightly and really relax the back of the neck. For those of you who've got time, then from here you can spend a little bit extra time in Shavasana if you want to today. Okay, we're going to talk you through those five minutes. So first of all, we're going to take those three gas breaths. So really breathe into the stomach, expanding the stomach towards the ceiling, expanding the rib cage. And then when you're ready, let the breath go out of the mouth. And again, breathe into the stomach, expand and stretch, breathe into the rib cage and let go. And one more time, strong and long inward breath. And when you're ready, let go. <sighs> and for the next couple of minutes, you're allowing the body, you're allowing the mind to completely rest and relax. You're letting go of any tension the shoulders, the neck, the forehead, the face, and the jaw. You're allowing those arms to become heavy to relax the arms down into the mat. And as those arms become heavy and relaxed, you can feel the hands release and let go. 
can feel the vertebrae in the spine relaxing and lowering down to the mat one by one, or from the very top of the neck to the very base of the back. The next deep inward breath is long and strong. And your outward breath is long and deep. In your next outward breath, you can feel your legs become heavy and relaxed as they sink down into the mat. And as those legs relax, you can feel the feet release and open. Again, your next deep inward breath is long and deep. And as you breathe out, Become aware that the body feels completely relaxed and restful. And the mind has let go of any of those thoughts coming inwards, allowing the mind to relax along with the body. And for the next couple of minutes, enjoying that relaxed and restful feeling. Slowly feel the awareness come back into the body as we beat the singing bowl. Feel the awareness come back into the body and bring yourself back into the room. Or if you've got time, then spend an extra five minutes in Shavasana. Really allow the body to relax and to rest along with the mind. Thank you and I will see you again soon.